What's up? What's happening? What is popping? What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another great edition of Simone with the Spizzards. I'm Simone, bringing you guys daily sports talk. So if you're new here, if you're old here, and you haven't already subscribed to my channel, stop what you're doing, leave a comment, subscribe, keep rocking with me. Also, make sure you check out the links down below. The first one is to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel. The second link is to shop the official Simone with the Spizzards, a merch collection, get you the classic tee, the wavy tee, and the flower dye crew neck. But y'all, if you have not done anything else, turn your notification bells on right now so you don't miss a single video or a single live stream and you know we are live every monday night for the birds of broad street podcast but y'all let me know how y'all feeling down below we are headed to week eight i can't believe it's already week eight but we have a lot to get into today so let's go ahead and get into it first things first biggest piece of news in my opinion Jalen Hurts not being on the injury report that is so big because we know that the idea of Jalen being injured and we saw him coming out with that brace after the game and there's so many questions surrounding is he injured is he not injured um since I believe the Rams game um that talk has been going on some people want to say he's been injured since the Vikings game so it's just been a lot of questions Jalen said yesterday I'm not answering any more questions about this injury let me just put the facts on the table he said I did not get injured in game he said I've never been injured on a running play he said anytime he's ever been injured it's been in the pocket so he said cut that G out stop that narrative and um he said whatever he's going through now did not happen in game but it's good to see that he's not on the injury report so we can all re the relax relax everybody relax okay chill out um number two on the news list is it's been reported that Howie Roseman is still on the phone making moves y'all the trade deadline is Tuesday Halloween and if we pull off another big move it's going to be scary hours for the NFL on Halloween. It's going to be real spooky for these other teams if we pull off another move. So let me know what y'all think that potential move could be. Everybody keeps saying running back, but I'm just confused because we already have um, Rashad Penny, who has been a healthy scratch. I want to say every week he hasn't even been active and he's been healthy scratch. Some people want to say we're saving Rashad Penny for later in the season, but I don't know if I necessarily believe that because why would we like, wouldn't he need to get some carries here and there? He should be getting all of Kenny Gainwell's carries, at least some of Kenny Gainwell's carries. Um, so he can rev up. Like we can't just expect to pull him out cold and um, late in the season, expect him to be on fire. Like, you know, he's got to warm up and get into the groove and everything. So I don't know if I believe that necessarily that, oh, we're saving Rashad Penny. I have no idea why Rashad Penny's not playing, but do y'all see a move being for a running back? I don't know if I see running back, you guys, because we already have hella mouths to feed and we already have multiple people on the team already complaining about not getting enough targets so I don't know about adding another offensive piece um to the unit but y'all let me know what do y'all think that that trade could be but the trade that we just had for Kevin Byard, y'all. Kevin Byard, he just had his press conference yesterday, and it was a lot of gems from that press conference. I posted it on my page, so go check it out if you have it. But the biggest thing that stood out to me is his relationship with Reed Blankenship. Him and Reed Blankenship went to the same college, um, and they trained together over the summer, so they already have that chemistry. Kevin Byard said this offseason he was training with Reed Blankenship. He's been keeping up with Reed. So this Kevin Byard move was just was – just, meant to be not only his relationship with AJ Brown but the relationship he already has with our other starting safety Ed Reed Blankenship like you just can't write a better story like he's from Philly he's friends with AJ he has a relationship with Reed Blankenship and he really has a relationship with Reed because he was talking about Reed and the other the media members were asking him um what he thinks about Reed, and he was saying Reed is fire. He was like, um, he had his first interception last year against Aaron Rodgers. That means he was actually paying attention. He's not just blowing smoke. He actually been following our guy Reed. So it's just so great to see that he already has that chemistry with the players. Like, ah! I know we were after a lot of guys. We had our eyes on a lot of guys, but it just makes so much sense why we got Kevin Byer uh, with all the ties to the team and the ties to the city. But y'all, 
It's crazy because A.J. Brown literally has all his buddies on the team. A.J. Brown is winning right now. He deserves it. The NFC Offensive Player of the Week. He's over 125 yards in the last five games. A.J. Brown deserves, but he has all his buddies on the team. Jalen Hurts, his buddy. Julio Jones, buddy. Kevin Byer, buddy. It's giving A.J. Brown's team, y'all. If you made it this far in the video, do y'all think this is A.J. Brown's team? Like, I feel like... This season is giving A.J. Brown's team, like A.J. Brown and the Philadelphia Eagles. No shade to anybody else, you know what I'm saying? But he's the star on the team right now. Like, you know how it's been like Jalen and the Eagles, Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. This is A.J.'s team. This is A.J.'s team, okay? Let me know if y'all agree if you made it this far in the video. But speaking of Jalen Hurts, I did want to touch on this topic. So the Eagles dropped out, dropped a mic'd up, um, Jalen Hurts mic'd up, and you could just see so much of Jalen's personality. You could see um, just how much fun he's having in game um, with AJ Brown, his receivers, Devonte, and all them. And I know it was just so great to see because um, most of the time we just get to see stoic Jalen Hurts and like serious Jalen Hurts, professional Jalen Hurts. Like even during the game when they show Jalen, it's always him on the sidelines, locked in as he should be. Um, and then we see him in the post-game pressers in a professional setting with the media. And, you know, of course, he's going to have his guard up with the media. Um, even to the point where my mom was like, my mom literally said, I feel like Jalen might be playing bad because he's um, too tense. Like, he needs to relax and whatnot. And I was like, Ma, that's just how he acts to the media. I guarantee you he probably doesn't act like that, you know, in any other setting. And so it was just great to see that mic'd up, just seeing how much fun Jalen's having with the team, how much fun he's having on the sidelines. And that was even in a game where, you know, he had um, the two turnovers. So just to know that he was still loose, still having fun, like that was great to see for me. That was really great to see um, because you do, like we do appreciate Jalen being so such a professional, such a leader, but it's also – great to know that he's having fun um, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. And at the end of the day, I think that funness, um, that level of enjoying will create the longevity and will keep him loose um, during the game. So it was great to see that. I really, really, really um, enjoy seeing that. Somebody on Twitter said Jalen Hurst was cold switch it. <laughs> If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Somebody said Jalen Hurts be cold switching for the media because he was like a totally different person or his mic up. But y'all, that's just something. If you know, you know. Um, I'm looking to see if I have anything else on my list to talk about. Um, one last thing, and I'm going to do a short on this. But this is the NFC playoff picture after week seven. Like I said, I'm going to do a short on this on the channel today. But if the if the playoffs started right now, and I know it's early, but y'all, this is just all fun. So don't say it's too early. It's just fun. If the playoffs started right now, the Eagles would have the number one seed. We had to bye, bye, bye. You know what I'm saying? Um, it will be the Bucks at the Lions. The, it will be the number seven seed Bucks at the number two Lions. It will be the number six Little Boys at the number three um Niners and it will be the number five Seahawks at the number four Falcons y'all a loaded NFC playoffs like ah! I definitely don't want to get ahead of myself I'm enjoying the season that's already going by so fast I don't want I don't want the playoffs to be here because that means the regular season is gone um but it's just it's just it's just Fun to look at. But like I said, I'm going to be doing a short on that later. But y'all, make sure you like this video. Make sure you leave a comment. Subscribe. Keep rocking with me. Check out the links down below. Buy me the coffee. I feel this channel. Shout out to the official small in the Spitzers merch collection. And until I talk to you guys next time. Bye.